Hey. Well, thank you. I'd like you to look at your hands. I mean, really look at your hands. How many times have you actually done this? Look at reality staring you right in the face. I want you to imagine holding a scalpel. I want you to really imagine this. You're a surgeon about to perform an operation. You're going to cut on somebody. Can you imagine that? What you're going to do to this person? You're going to cut on them and you're going to do all kinds of things. There's a lot of gravity to that, a lot of impact, a lot of responsibility. You got to be completely engaged. And you're it. You're doing this. Well, you know, you kind of do this all during the course of your life anyways. You just might not see it that way. What you need is a surgical perspective, a surgical mindset. You may say, whoa, I don't need that, you know? A lot of stress, a lot of responsibility, a lot of risk. You know, I'm very comfortable just floating through life, getting by. Well, maybe you do. You know, in this watered-down world, increasingly watered-down with technology, my gosh, I don't even need to drive to work. I can sleep in the back seat of my car and it'll take me there. I don't know if I even need to go to work, right? We got robots and computers that'll be able to do this for me. If you find yourself living more outside in, I think you do need this perspective. And why? Because surgery is about seeing things the way they are. It's about reality. It's about substance, not fluff. It's about applying with intensity, with clarity. And most importantly, you have to be engaged. You have to be involved. You have to own it. You have to take responsibility. It's profound. Isn't that the way life should be? Think about it. You know, the surgical approach really is about amplifying life. Getting away from the term routine surgery, which is an oxymoron, to routine life. Amplify the intensity, the clarity, the engagement, the involvement. It's about immersion. You know, life isn't about getting by. Life is about being immersed in it. And that's the most important thing I think you need to understand, because that's really what surgery is about. That's what living is about. It's not about being alive, it's about really living. Well, if you want to do something like this, you don't just dive in, you know? You don't wing it in surgery, you got to be trained. That can be perilous for your patient and for you as the surgeon. You need a methodology, not a cookbook. You got to be careful of cookbooks. Cookbooks are color by number, you know? You can have expectations with that. No such thing in life or in surgery. So I'm going to give you a little report from the battlefield, the battlefield of life and surgery, from the front lines, because this is what I do for a living. I'm going to tell you my approach, which I apply not just to surgery, but to basically everything I do. As we go through this, I want you to remember a couple of things, a couple of rules. One of my mentors always used to say, never say never and never say always. But I'm going to make an exception. Always cut from known to unknown. Validating every step. Growing. Clarity begets clarity. And validate for yourself. You need to know this. Always follow the truth. The truth is the same anywhere, everywhere, all the time. And always follow that very basic dictum in all of medicine. It's the most basic principle. First, do no harm. And if you stay within the lanes, then you can start making some progress going forward. So let's explore this together. We'll take a little short journey. We won't get too far, but we'll get far enough. So first of all, what you need is vision. I don't mean just ordinary vision, oh, I got a vision for this or that. I'm talking about a surgical vision. There's some importance to this. You have to really see things the way they are. It forces you to understand with clarity. I like to start with the end in mind. I like to see my patient, the player, back on the field. Maybe they're doing some yard work. You know, Maybe they just want to be able to walk to the refrigerator. Maybe just do their hair. It puts the, my patient as the objective, not myself. Always keep your mission in mind, what it is that you're trying to do. And you need to understand with granularity, really map this out. We call it our pre-operative plan, our intraoperative plan, our post-operative plan, all the way through. I'm imagining all the complications that can occur, the pitfalls, how to address them, how to avoid them. With total detail, protocols, checklists, all these things are in place. Those are tools. Understand your objective, and that's really critical. Because if you don't, you run the risk of being, as one of my professors said, a Christopher Columbus surgeon. You know, Christopher Columbus, when he started, really didn't know where he was going. When he got there, really wasn't sure of where he was. 
And when he got back, he really couldn't tell you where he'd been. <laughs> Important to understand that. Don't be that kind of surgeon. Don't be that kind of person in life. Have clarity, have precision, and do your mapping with a level of surgical importance. But you know, vision's not enough. As a surgeon, you have to apply. It's an old Japanese proverb that says, vision without action is a daydream, but action without vision, a nightmare. You need an infrastructure, it's your mechanism of action. You know, people don't pay enough attention to this thing. For me, it's my operating room. My operating room is my temple. I treat it that way. It's a sacred place. You have to do everything just right, meticulously organize and arrange. It's the operating room, it's the equipment, it's a crackpot surgical team. You have to nurture your team. Imagine this, okay? Just like you nurture yourself, you nurture your team. They're a part of you. You're all viscerally connected. The system is what stays, sustains you. It gives you resilience. When something doesn't go right, you have to have all these other parts that compensate. And so your environment is extremely critical. It's like being a race car driver, you know? You see these guys, you watch this F1 racing? These guys are viscerally connected to their team. They're viscerally connected to their car. They're viscerally connected to that track. It's a perfection of that external environment. And you need to treat it that way and really think about it. If you want a surgical approach, it's not playing games. Do this thing. Don't play games with your own life. Understand that. So just like you optimize your external environment, you want to optimize your internal environment. Clinical excellence. You know, being a surgeon, you're a lifelong student. You're constantly learning. You have to be, you have to be like a sponge. You're taking all of this in. Training relentlessly. Train your body and your mind. You know, don't neglect either one of them. In surgery, it's extremely important. You might not tell, but you know, you gotta have a little bit of some body, especially when you're talking about doing orthopedics. It gets to be pretty heavy. So train both of these and relentlessly. Understand something. You can learn something from everyone in life. Everybody has something to teach. I don't care who they are. And it gives you a different level of respect, whoever you meet. Whoever you meet, understand that. They have something to teach. To be a surgeon, you have to be the best. And I mean it, you have to be the best. The best doesn't mean being better than the guy next door. Not the, oh, the best I can be. No, that's not good enough. You have to be the best possible. Do you want to go to a surgeon and says, you know what, I get pretty good results. You want to go to the guy who says, you know, most of the time I'm doing pretty well. You're not walking out of that office, you're running. Okay, so it's important to understand, you have to be the best. And it's not about arrogance, it's about confidence. Confidence is born of humility. Arrogance is born of insecurity. So understand that. You're doing it for your objective. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to your life. Be the best. You have the privilege of being alive. Be the best at it. And so when it comes down to technique, this is just an extension of everything you've done. What's the key to success? Preparation, right? You've done all these things. You've trained. So when it comes time to game day, when you're actually applying, that application is a natural extension of everything you've done. You apply meticulously completely focused. The world may be coming in, but you're focused on the task at hand, expanding very delicately from known to unknown, all the basic surgical principles that we follow. You know, thinking closure while you're cutting, thinking about coming down the mountain while you're going up. You have to think about all these different things as you're going through. The most important thing to remember about technique is you have an obligation to a perfection of effort. You have no obligation or entitlement to the, to the actual expectation of the outcome. That's not in your control. What is in control is your effort. You have to do it perfectly every single time. And you know, in, in the operating room, when you get that flow, it's a surgical symphony. Things are just going great. But at the end of the day, you can do an absolutely perfect job. There's a snake behind every bush and you never know what happens. That's what outcomes are about. You have no expectations. That's an illusion. Outcomes are about validation. What really took place? Figure it out, find out. Because guess what? You own the outcome, but you also own the lesson learned. And that's the most important thing. Some of the deepest, hardest lessons you'll ever learn come from those deepest, darkest places. Now let me tell you, in the world of surgery, gosh, my very first case when I came in was flesh-eating bacteria. And I spent many and many sleepless nights for months trying to keep this guy alive. But it was all a part of me, and I owned it. And I learned more from that than I think about anything else when I learned in medicine. And even now, up until this day, two decades later, still the same attitude I have. You know, all my patients live right here. And you've gotta go deep, and the harder lessons, the greater that lesson is, the greater that regret, the greater that experience, that downfall that you might experience, the greater the transformation that you're gonna get. And that's true in life. So understand it, you own that lesson that's learned. And even more importantly, it's about perfecting the equation because it's about the application of that lesson learned. 
That's going to be your redemption. You want to figure it out. What happened? Why did it happen? You have to understand the problem. If you understand the problem long enough, the solution will present itself. That's an extremely important thing. Mull over it. Dig deep. The dark night of the soul. And if it doesn't exist, you know, create it. Innovate. This is your chance to contribute. Up until now, all the students, all the soldiers, all the things you are, you get all this borrowed knowledge. You got to give back. You got to expand. You give back to life. That's your contribution, your growth. It's obligatory, and remember that. If you're on this earth, give something back to it. And finally, surgery is about, most importantly, you. You know, when my nurse finishes her timeout, when the plane takes off and the rocket launches, the books, the manuals, your friends, your family, your parents, your mentors, your teacher, everything and everyone disappears. There's nothing left but you. And you're alone in the operating room. You're alone in life. You got to perform with clarity, intensity, engagement over and over again. It all comes down to you. You own the whole thing. And if you do this with commitment and discipline long enough and you keep showing up to the ring over and over again, an awareness emerges. Wait a minute. You're the mortar that holds it all together, all those different parts. It's all about you. It's an extension of you. You own it. You are an expansion of it, it of you. And when you start understanding that, you start behaving differently. It's manifest in your actions externally and in your attitude internally. This is immersion. And so when you navigate that Hillary step, elevating yourself by yourself, and you get to the top, a remarkable thing happens. The universe really does come together. It unfolds, and you will achieve victory. Wow. And now you live differently. You know? You got a little bit more step. You live effortlessly, but with intensity. The intensity is effortless. You're now living inside out. You know, it doesn't matter. You just live. You live maximally, and everything happens. Whatever happens, you're putting forth for perfect efforts, and you're defining what the outcomes are. You're going through this thing, and it becomes very effortless. It's no longer a discipline. You become a disciple. You apply the microcosm to the macrocosm, and the macrocosm to the microcosm. And you can do this in anything you do. For myself, in terms of even my practice, you know, one of the things I want to do is engage my patients on a broader scale. So I tried to build what Disney called Epcot, which is the experimental prototype community of tomorrow. I wanted to do it as a clinic. And the idea of really building something that's platform with a really broad vision. And so one of the things, one example of that is if, if you go to my operating room, everybody can actually watch me operate. My patient's family watched me operate. Now I engage them. the third leg of that stool, which we've neglected so long in healthcare, the patient, empower them, bring them into the equation. It's an expansion of what I do in the software world. Being a professional team athlete, taking care of athletes, I want to apply that same mentality to all my patients, treat them as athletes, performance, maximizing performance. So I create a translational database which transforms disability into capability. Can't, build, can't do it, can't do All connected in singular systems and data analytics. Even in the medical device space, one of the things that was really important to me was it took so long, if you have a great idea, before you can actually get it out there and manufacture it and implement it. So on-site, building CAD designs in the OR with prototype 3D printing so we can at quantum speeds accelerate getting that idea out to our patients. Again, connectivity. Even in the restaurant space, right here at our own Georgia Tech, you know, one of the things that was really important for me was, hey man, you know, you got all these patients you operate on, you're doing this fancy surgery, biologic surgery, all these other things. But if they're not taking care of themselves, it doesn't really work. So nutrition is one of the most important parts of that. So this became a platform for me, and we're really expanding that to students and soldiers. We've really done extremely well, and I'm really proud of my team in that regard. You can even apply it to giving a TED Talk. Here I am alone. So, <laughs> But anyways, the important thing to understand is live every single day, every single day to the maximum. Every day is a new beginning. Every moment is a new beginning. In fact, you know, there only are beginnings. That's it. There's nothing else. All the rest is an illusion that you're carrying forth with you. Jettison the riffraff. Everything is a new beginning. My grandmother stated it best. Like only a grandmother can, but tenderness and grace. She says, Beta jagya te arti sabar. It's an old Gujarati proverb. And basically it means when you awaken, it's morning. 
So when you wake up, look at your hands. Imagine the possibility. Look at the reality in the face. Recognize the privilege of being alive, of having hands. Go forth, apply with clarity, intensity, complete engagement, and owning it all. It's an extension of you and you of it. Extremely important to remember that. And then you start immersing into it. And when you do, that ancient medical principle naturally permeates it all. It's a part of it. Whether it's applied to your patients, your friends, your family, your colleagues, to all living beings, to the environment, to the earth. Primum non nocere. First, do no harm. So now go forth and achieve victory. See, the surgical approach is about you. And the world is your operating room. So hold the knife and be the surgeon of your life. Thank you.